everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. We got another great presentation today. We've been doing a series of lectures on anemia. Okay, so we started with um, <clears throat> how the uh, RBCs are produced, then we gave a presentation on iron deficiency anemia, we talked about anemia, chronic kidney disease, and today we're going to talk about sideroblastic anemia, um, another important topic. And um, again, my name is Premier Charyat, I work as a physician, program director, internal medicine residency, transitional residency, I'm an assistant professor of medicine in two large US medical schools. So. Let's get into our topic. Thank you for joining us. Okay, so what is sideroblastic anemia? What does it sidero mean? Somebody tell me. Sidero is iron. Sidero means this heme or iron, right? And the blastic means immature. And the anemia is decreased RBC. Okay, so if you look at the definition, the definition of sideroblastic anemia is defect in heme synthesis. Where does it happen? in the mitochondria of the RBC. So we got a nice picture of all RBC right here and the mitochondria. So this is where the defect is pretty much happening, okay? So let's look at, everybody know the definition? Somebody read the definition one more time for me, please. It's a defect in heme synthesis within mitochondria of developing RBC. Okay, now epidemiology, is it common or rare? Rare. Very rare, okay? And then what are the etiology? Somebody tell me the acquired, the acquired is ethanol, yep. vitamin B6, yep. lead poisoning. Ethanol abuse, you know, it's ethanol you abuse. drink one or two drinks, that's okay. But alcohol abuse, vitamin B6, uh, lead poisoning, decreased copper, and then INH, linoxolate, and increased zinc, yes. okay. And then you got a whole different like inherited part also. Okay, now let's look at what happens in when you have ETOH abuse people. Where does it, I mean, how does it affect? It impairs the vitamin B6 metabolism, okay? So this part is going to be affected, okay? We'll come back and we can talk about it. And then lead poisoning, okay? Where does the lead poisoning affect? Two places. It can affect uh, conversion of protoporphyrin to heme, and this place is going to be lead is affected. And lead is affected this part, amino levulinic acid into porphobilinogen. Um, so that can also get affected, so you can form sideroblastic anemia. Okay, now what happened to the copper? Copper is important in the oxidation of the ferrous to ferric, okay? Remember that, ferrous to ferric. And then you got INH, everybody know that INH is like disturbs conversion of vitamin B6 to active cofactor. It's going to affect up here. And um, zinc, how does it zinc affect? Zinc effect is like, um, it combined with the protoporphyrin and they cause like the zinc protoporphyrin, okay? Zinc also does is, it um, decreases the copper level in the blood also, okay? I mean, you have to be carry, very careful in this zinc because, you know, right now there's an epidemic with the COVID, right? A lot of people taking zinc tablets and all that. I wonder how many of them become sideroblastic anemia. In the, this need to be like watched really carefully. But we'll come back to that. And then clinical presentation, any type of anemia. Somebody tell me what is the anemia people usually present with? Fatigue, malaise, and shortness, shortness, shortness of breath, palpitation, maybe like severe, they could even cause like chest pain and all that, right? Okay, so we got that. Now is the most important um, in the metabolism, like what happens in this, that's what we need to know. Okay, this is the RBC. What is this? Mitochondria. Mitochondria, this is cytoplasm. Yeah. Okay, let's start up here in the heme synthesis, right here. That's what happened in heme synthesis, okay? So you got glycine and succinate CoA that uses vitamin B6 to make it amino levulinic acid. Everybody got that? Most important stuff. And then amino levulinic is converted into porphobilinogen, amino levulinic acid dehydrates the enzyme, and then porphobilinogen is converted to hydroxymethylene bilane by porphobilinogen deaminase. Okay? So, <clears throat> and then what happens, you got this uh, hydroxymethylene is converted into uroporphyrinogen 3, which is kind of converted into coproporphyrinogen 3, which is converted into protoporphyrin 3. Now, this is where changes, it comes into mitochondria, from cytoplasm to mitochondria. And then use ferrous to convert it into heme. And the enzyme is ferroketolase. Okay? 
I'm, so, I'm sorry, ferrochelatasin sign. Okay, so it's very important to know where all these uh, places, the heme synthesis and all that. Now let's look at the pathophysiology. What happened to them? You know, when you talk about lead poisoning, where does it affect? Somebody tell me. It affects ferrochelatase enzyme, right? And then it affects amino levulonic dehydratase, so lead poisoning, right? So in what happened, the sideroblastic anemia, which is X-linked, the problem is amino levulonic acid synthetase. Everybody got that? Okay, now porphyria can affect all of this kind of thing. Mainly over here, porphyria converting this porphobilinogen deaminase part is affected, okay? So remember this. Porphyria, most very, very important, okay? And then you can also uroporphyrinogen decarboxylase, porphyria cutanea tarda, okay? It's very important in all of this. Um, so let's look at the, I mean, the, some of the things again. We talk about alcohol. Somebody told me what happens in the alcohol, how does it affect? It is just so vitamin B6. Vitamin B6 metabolism, right? So you can have sideroblastic anemia. Somebody said vitamin B6 role right here. If there's a deficiency, this is this um, glycine and succinyl CoA will not be converted into amino levulonic acid, right? And then what happened to lead poisoning? John, somebody tell me. It affects the two places. That two places. Start with the one up here. What happens over here? It uh, inhibits the ferrochelates, which are uh, ferrochelates inhibited. So the last step in the protoporphyrin and ion will not happen, right? Yeah. What happened over here with the lead? It uh, it affects the amino levulonic acid dehydratase. Okay. Now you tell me, like, what is it like? How does the copper affect? Uh, the decrease of oxidation so. from ferrous to ferric. Okay. And then INH, you tell me, INH? Uh, because B6 deficiency. B6 problem, okay. It's affected glycine, succinyl acid, acetylcholinic acid. And the zinc? Uh, Somebody tell me what happened to zinc? It combines with protoporphyrin to form G. Yeah, protoporphyrin is combined with zinc and form what? Zinc protoporphyrin. So this. This is kind of block right here, okay? It also decreases copper. So remember, zinc is very, very important. A lot of people are taking zinc lozenges. Um, I think um, because anytime they have a respiratory infection, like uh, people always take zinc, okay? Zinc lozenges that can cause, like, there's a lot of case reports about. Now with the COVID epidemic, you have to be very careful. A lot of people taking extra zinc, okay, in the hospital also. And um, so everybody got this, right? Now, let's see like what happens in the lab value. What's the number one? MCV is going to be decreased, right? What is a normal MCV? If it is usually like this is going to be like 80 to 100, you can say normal. This is going to be less than 80, okay? This is going to be what? Microcytic anemia. What are the other causes of microcytic anemia? Iron deficiency. Iron deficiency. What is, that's the number one cause in the world, yeah. okay? And then you got increased iron. They can be increased for it in... Percentage of saturation increase and TIBC decreased. Okay, now the most important, somebody said this, read it really loud. What is that? Ringed sideroblasts. Louder. Ringed sideroblasts. Ringed sideroblasts. What are they actually? In the mitochondria, you got what? Deposit of what? Iron. Iron deposit in the mitochondria in a circle. Yes, I everybody got that. Is. Sometimes, you know, if it's an examination, they can ask, where is it? It's not in the cytoplasm. Okay, a lot of people think, I mean, I make the mistake of a cytoplasm. It's in the mitochondria, my friends. Okay, you do what? Pressure and blue staining, right? See the ring sideroblast in the mitochondria in a circle. And how do you treat it? Again, fix the problem. These will say quiet, right? Genetic testing may be needed for the other people. And then always supplement vitamin B6. Where does the vitamin B6 work? Somebody tell me, very, very important. In mitochondria. Huh? In mitochondria. What? Like what part it is it? It converts glycine plus succinyl CoA yeah. to um, uh, amino levulonic acid. acid. Yeah. Okay, very, very important. This is kind of effect. You need vitamin B6, so you give vitamin B6 supplementation. You always give the um, vitamin and folic acid genetic. Thing. In lead poisoning, right? What happened in the, what is the peripheral scent? The peripheral smear is going to look like? Basophilic, Basophilic stippling in the? What they say. In the RBC, what are this basophilics actually? Somebody said it's a ribosome accumulation, right? Okay, remember that basophilic stippling in the uh, lead poisoning is very common. So all of, I mean, make sure you just kind of look at it. I'm just going to stand up here, make sure you so. What are the causes? Um, ETOH and each part. Where does it work? 
Okay, and then think about like ring sideroblasts in lead poisoning, basophilic stippling, and the most important thing about pyrodoxin, the B6 supplementation is the treatment. Okay, thank you so much uh, for everyone watching today. We'll be back with another presentation. If you could help us, uh, subscribe to our channel and uh, hit that like button. It definitely helps us to make more presentations. Uh, and it takes a lot of people's effort to make presentations like this. Please, please help us. Thank you very much. Bye.